So on this slide we talk about Lefschetz fixed point theorem. So Lefschetz fixed point theorem should be considered as a generalization of the Brouwer fixed point theorem and it is also related to the Euler characteristic. So let us write this down that it is a generalization of Brouwer fixed point theorem. Yeah, so consider a map phi or a homomorphism phi from Zn to Zn. Now we want to define the trace of this homomorphism. So this is a map homomorphism. Now obviously phi is nothing but a matrix. So matrix A written as Aij. So we want to define the trace of phi. So we will write it as Tr phi which is nothing but the sum of the diagonal elements of the matrix. So that is how we will write it. So this is nothing but the sum of the diagonal elements. So you just need to make a note that the trace is independent of the choice of faces. Yeah, this is a result from linear algebra. So you take the trace of a matrix, it is independent of whatever choice of the faces you make. So now I want to define a homomorphism between finitely generated abelian groups and then define the trace of that homomorphism. So consider this homomorphism phi from A to A where A is a finitely generated abelian group. So before you define the trace, we have to define another homomorphism So this phi, uh, this homomorphism between two finitely generated abelian groups induces another homomorphism Yeah, so that is you take the torsion elements of A out that is you take from map from A modulo its torsion so whatever torsion elements there are in A you take them out or the torsion subgroups or the torsion component and then you take the trace of this map phi bar So this trace of phi bar is will be called the trace of phi. Now this will be important when we will talk about uh, Lefschetz number of say spaces like R, P, N. Yeah, so keep this in mind. 
that the trace is nothing but A modulo the torsion group and we will precisely use it in RPN and even. So now we need to define the left shift's number. So given a map F which goes from space X to itself, we need to define the trace of this map. So where X is a finite CW complex. So we want to define the left shift's number of this map. So let us first describe X a bit more. So X is a finite CW complex or it is a space whose homology groups are number one finite and number two they vanish in higher dimension. So we have a map F from space X to X and this space X is either a finite CW complex or its higher homology groups are finite and they vanish in higher dimensions. Now why we are requiring these two conditions this will become clear as we define the left shift's number. So left shift's number is like this you take the sum over n and then you have the trace. So trace of f star yeah so this f star is induced from the map f yeah so we initially said that we wanted to define the trace of map f. So the trace of map f actually comes in the form of f star which is a homomorphism from one abelian group to another. So if it is a finitely generated, generated abelian group then you need to take that finitely generated abelian group modulo torsion. Now particular cases what if f is an id then you will notice that the left shift's number is precisely nothing but the Euler characteristic and we need to give the reason why. Yeah, so first let us write down what the Euler characteristic is. So instead of trace which is uh, the part of left shift's number we have written rank which is part of Euler characteristic. So why rank is equal to trace because f star is nothing but the identity matrix. Yeah, so in this case the trace will be precisely n which is the rank of h and x. So the trace and rank are equal because the trace of f star is as you can see n which is the rank of the homology group. Yeah the, now this is this is obvious because uh, yeah it is just going from space x to x and it is just nothing but an id map. 